So it's time for an update video on the DIY BMS here in the solar shed and it's connected to a 7S 20P lithium ion pack made out of 18650s which are reclaimed from laptop batteries and I have to say I've been putting off making this video not because of loads and loads of issues quite the opposite because it's very difficult to make a video about something that's working perfectly well but now I do have an issue so I have something to report so earlier this week this is the screen that confronted me uh, as presented by the DIY BMS management console and it says there is no data available. Now just to recap this is the page that is served by the Wemos D1 Mini in my case which is the central controller for the DIY BMS system. And normally I would see a graph here showing me the voltages and the temperatures of each of those individual modules attached to the individual groups of cells. But as you can see, it's no longer showing that. And if I click in the module section, it says you need to provision your modules. It's as if the DIY BMS has completely forgotten about all the modules. Now I have to admit this has happened probably two or three times in the last five months and it's not really a problem the the Wemos D1 Mini has just crashed or something like that usually clicking reset controller and waiting well 30 seconds a minute no longer than that all of this uh, information comes back and it starts communicating with the modules once more but sadly that didn't happen this week so I straight away turned my attention to that Wemos D1 Mini there at the end of this string controlling each of the uh, seven modules here and in fact I ended up swapping it out not once but twice and here's my uh, rejected Wemos D1 Minis that also lost communication with all these modules and I've been scratching my head and as you can see well I've changed from uh, powering the Wemos from USB to using this uh, DC to DC converter. I did wonder whether the Wemos didn't have enough power on that 3.3 uh, volt rail to power all the ADUM 1250 ARZ I2C chips that each of these have on to uh, communicate and to also isolate the module from the uh, shared ground I guess from the uh, Wemos D1 Mini but no uh, adding this DC to DC converter has made no difference whatsoever and uh, the modules were still being forgotten for want of a better term by the Wemos D1 Mini. So you'll understand it was hard for me to accept that potentially I had seven modules that all had the same fault on them. Um, but I started to have a look here at the modules themselves, having a look at the solder joints and that sort of thing. And it just so happened that I brushed past this thermistor and suddenly the LED lit up. The module rebooted and a few seconds later, well the Wemos D1 Mini could see it again and was getting information from it and I guess that was my light bulb moment. Here in the schematic we can see the part of the circuit that I'm interested in. This thermistor here and these two fixed resistors make up a voltage divider which allows the 80 tiny 85 to calculate the temperature uh, based on the voltage at this point here. This voltage divider is connected to PB5 on the AT Tiny, and herein lies my issue. Stuart makes a note here um, pointing out that if this point here drops below half of VCC, well, a reset is forced because this is the reset pin. And as you can see, it says reset with a line above it. This is an active high. So um, when the voltage drops below about 1.6 volts, well, a reset is invoked. And therefore, I think my AT tinies are going into a permanent reset state. So why would Stuart use the PB5 reset pin uh, to connect this thermistor and check the temperature? Well, the simple answer to that is this is an 8-pin device. And with VCC and ground, uh, we've got two I2C uh, communication pins. We've got one for a status LED and uh, one for uh, the voltage divider 
uh, reading the voltage of the batteries and finally we've got a MOSFET pin as well so ultimately all the pins are taken up. So I think we need to look at a few things here. We need to calculate the voltage at this point um, at a few different temperatures. Uh, before we can do that we need to look at the total resistance when resistors are in parallel because we've got this 10k thermistor here and a 68k fixed resistor. But before we can do that we need to look at the resistance of our thermistor. When exactly does it have a resistance of 10,000 ohms and what resistance does it have at the highest and lowest temperatures I can expect here in the shed. So here we have the data sheet for the B57891M thermistor and uh, in this first table here we can see its rated temperature is 25 degrees Celsius so that means it will operate at 10,000 ohms at 25 degrees C and uh, further down we can see that our 10k model here follows the char characteristics of the 4901 which is further still down the data sheet uh, a little bit further still 4901 so under this column the 4901 this is effectively a multiplier so at 25 degrees celsius uh, we times the 10k rated uh, thermistor by one so it's at 10k at 25 degrees celsius but let's just drop it down here to five degrees well suddenly the multiplier is at 2.5 so that means at five degrees that thermistor has a resistance of 25,000 ohms that's going to make a considerable difference to that voltage divider now we know the value of this thermistor at 5 degrees Celsius and we know the fixed resistor here we can calculate the total resistance between the two when these are in parallel and uh, this is the equation to work that out and you can do it with multiple resistors in parallel but actually when it's just two this is the easier equation but I'm not going to work it out that way right now no up here there is also a calculator so uh, we've got resistor one which was the fixed resistor of 68,000 ohms and then we just found out that our thermistor can be uh, 25,000 ohms at 5 degrees Celsius which gives us an equivalent resistance of 18,279 ohms. I'm going to drop off the 0.57 and now we know that these two resistors have an equivalent resistance of 18,279 ohms. We can put that number and this 10,000 ohm number into a voltage divider calculator. And in fact, we could, again, put it into this equation. But I'm not going to bother doing that because I've already put the numbers here lower down into this table. Our voltage source, our rail, is 3.3 volts. We've got 18,279 ohms ohms on resistor 1 and 10,000 ohms on resistor 2 and if we press calculate well the voltage at PB5 at 5 degrees Celsius is 1.167 volts and unfortunately that's too low and that will reset the AT tiny. So now that I think I've identified the issue, what can I do to rectify it? Well, I could heat the shed, I suppose, to make sure it never gets below 5 degrees Celsius, but that's a bit inefficient. But there is something to be said about that because the data sheet for my 18650s actually says that they shouldn't be charged at lower than zero degrees Celsius. So perhaps by heating the shed, I'm going to prolong the life of those cells. So it might not be as daft as it sounds. I could remove the thermistor entirely and replace it with a 10k fixed resistor. I'd lose the temperature readings and effectively the modules would assume it was 25 degrees C all the time, but they would continue to work in pretty much any temperature. I could replace the thermistor entirely with another with a lower value, but actually these thermistors were the third most expensive component on these modules, so I'd rather not. So the last option I've come up with is to change out the 68k or the 10k resistor here in the voltage divider. But that's going to take a bit of maths, so I think it's time to crack out a spreadsheet. 
Right then, so I've used the two equations we saw earlier to calculate the voltage at this point here, PB5, the midpoint of the voltage divider. And primarily to start with, I'm looking at swapping out this 68K resistor R3. So in my spreadsheet, I have uh, the replacement uh, resistor values. Uh, 68k is mentioned uh, for checking but I've also uh, put in a number of sort of pretty standard resistor values in that column. I'm also using a lookup table here um, that's taken basically directly from the data sheet of the thermistor. So on the left hand column we have temperature and the right hand column we have that multiplier value. So at 25 degrees the multiplier is 1. So I've set my low temperature here to 5 degrees and we're looking at the uh, 68,000 uh, ohm resistor, the standard one, and so therefore we should have the same number here as we calculated earlier on the voltage divider website. And I think that's right, isn't it? 1.166 volts. So yeah, too low to keep that AT tiny running. So uh, therefore we can work out actually that we need to have a voltage over 1.6 and that's the first number which is over 1.6 uh, row 24 and at 5 degrees c well we'd need an 18k resistor to ensure that the 80 tiny didn't reboot but do you know what this winter i'm expecting it to get a little bit colder so let's go for zero degrees well where's our 1.6 volt now well that's 1.63 volts there uh, row 26 and that means i need to use a 15k resistor in conjunction with my thermistor at this point so yeah 15k here leave the 10k where it is and that should ensure as long as the uh, the temperature stays in positive figures uh, that this point will always be over 1.6 volts and therefore the 80 tiny should never reboot now this spreadsheet does also allow me to change the value of the lower resistor which currently is 10k but I should be able to go in here there we go and change that to I don't know let's put a 20k resistor in that position and what does that do well that means that to get my 1.6 volts the no that one column 12 well 62 thousand ohms so yeah actually if i changed the bottom resistor the uh this resistor here to a 20k well i'm getting close to this never going below 1.6 volts so i guess i've got two options change this one for a 15k resistor or this one for a 20k resistor so there we go then if i swap out either that resistor or that resistor I can ensure that the AT Tiny isn't going to shut down at 5 degrees Celsius. Now that's a hardware issue fixed, I'm going to have to have a look at the software because of course the software needs to know about the change in resistance to accurately read the temperature of these modules, but I think I'll leave that for another day. It's worth remembering that this is really a hardware issue that I've introduced myself due to the fact that I'm storing these batteries and charging them in a fairly chilly environment and Stuart clearly hasn't designed the DIY BMS to be used at these cold temperatures and that's completely understandable because well as I mentioned earlier lithium ion cells aren't meant to be charged at low temperatures. Over the last five months, this has proved to be a really reliable system. I've been super impressed with the DIY BMS. So if this is something that you're interested in taking a look at yourself, well, I thoroughly recommend it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.